Good morning everybody, it's Palm Sunday, uh, April the 5th, 2020, and here we are in our homes uh, celebrating and remembering what happened on this particular day. Um, I'm going to read quite a few scriptures this morning, focusing on this uh, story, this account of what happened uh, to Jesus on the Sunday before his crucifixion the beginning of the last week of his life. Um, it's interesting, um, if you study the Gospels, that there aren't many events, apart from the crucifixion and resurrection, of course, that are recorded in all four Gospels. And this is one of them, the entry into Jerusalem by Jesus on the back of a donkey with the crowds celebrating around him. And I'm going to read the account of that event as, it, as Matthew records it. It's in Matthew 21, verse 1. And when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfil what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on an ass, and on the colt a foal of an ass. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the ass and the colt and put their garments on them, and he sat thereon. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. As I said, it's in all of the Gospels, and it's it's a fulfilment of um, part a, a verse out of the chapter in Zechariah, Zechariah chapter nine, um, which is all about the coming of the Messiah. And in the middle of that chapter, in verse nine, is this promise that the King would come to Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, and he would come, and he would not bring war, but he would bring peace and he would establish his covenant in blood uh, with his people. It's a wonderful chapter. If you've not read it for a long time, read Zechariah 9 um, as you think about the symbolism of what Jesus did. He was saying to these people, I am, I am the one that was promised. I am the one who's fulfilled every Old Testament promise, and I will fill, fulfill the rest of it um, before I'm done. And he did, didn't he? Fulfill everything. Um, as, as I was reading it, I was just, <laughs> I just thought, isn't it interesting that at the beginning of the life of Jesus, we think of Mary riding a donkey to Jerusalem when she was about to give birth. And here, at the beginning of the last week of the life of Jesus, there's another donkey involved in carrying him to the place he has to go to. He had to go to Bethlehem to be born, and he was carried by a donkey and he had to go to Jerusalem to die, and he was carried by a donkey. There's a, there's a sermon in that, I think, somewhere. Anyway, I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about this. He's coming into Jerusalem, he's riding a donkey, and uh, everybody is shouting and praising his name. And actually, in John's account of the entry into Jerusalem, it says the reason they came was because he'd raised Lazarus from the dead, and... Uh, uh, just just before that, and people came because they'd heard this amazing thing that he'd raised Lazarus from the dead um, in just such a wonderful way. And that's in the so it's, that's in John twelve, um, the the entry into Jerusalem. So here he is coming, and in in Luke, you know, the, all the people are shouting and praising and saying, "Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord." This is wonderful. He's coming, and I don't know what they were thinking really. I think they were hoping, perhaps, that all the promises about the kingdom of peace and about um, Israel being restored and about, uh, which in their minds meant the Roman 
uh, occupying forces being turned out. Um, I think they thought this was the beginning of the reign of the Messiah from Jerusalem. Of course, we understand it quite differently now, but that's perhaps how they saw it and might be one of the reasons why they turned against him that week because instead of marching into Pilate's palace and Herod's palace and declaring the kingdom was coming, he goes into the temple and sorts out the things that are wrong in the temple. And his, his priority list is quite different to theirs. And how often that is true, that Jesus's priority list is different to the one that we hold. Um, uh, there's a lot to learn, whatever we read, however familiar the passages are, there's a lot to learn. But in Luke's Gospel, when he tells this story, the, the account of the entry into Jerusalem, um, at the end of it, when everyone's shouting and praising God, um, some of the Pharisees, it says in, in Luke 19, verse 39, some of the Pharisees in the multitude said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. The very stones would cry out, you know. Um, and uh, I don't know what you're like uh, and what your experience of church has been. Perhaps you are um, in that large group of people for whom worshipping God is a very reverend, very quiet, very contained thing. Um, you know, we all arrive quietly, take our seats. Um, we do stand up and sing, but we don't get too excited. Um, we sing very reverently and beautifully to God. We give our best to God, and all of that is right. But there's quite a lot in the scripture that talks about exuberant praise. And it's been my heart's cry um, right from when I first read those words in Luke. Um, I wanted to say to God, um, please, when I stand before you at the end of time, I don't want you to say, the stones praised me more than you did. I don't want ever that to be said of me. Um, God has given me a voice. He didn't give the stones a voice. And yet the stones sometimes praise him more than we do because we close our mouths and we keep our praise inside. Um, those who know me well will know that in worship I do get a bit exuberant at times and I move around and I wave my hands about and I clap. And I have been known when I was younger to dance a bit um, because it seems to me that we have so much to get excited about. You know, if the if the fan club of the winning team in a football match can get excited and jump about and scream and, and wave their hands about and jump and shout and yell and clap, um, surely I can do that for the one who's given me so much. And there are verses in scripture um, uh, that encourage us to be just like that, to be as exuberant. Um, there's uh, Isaiah 55, verse 12, which I thought I had turned up, but it's here. Let me just turn it up. Isaiah 55 and verse 12. It, it says, um, And the ma you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. You know, the whole of nature is celebrating what Jesus did for us and what Jesus did to redeem the world. And we should join in. We should be leading the worship. We shouldn't be shamed by the, the world. You know, if the mountains, the mount, what a picture, the mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing. I, I, I can't imagine a mountain singing or a hill singing. And and the trees. I tried when I was when I was a teenager, I tried to draw a picture of trees clapping their hands and I failed miserably because I can't I I can't see it in my mind's eye. But that's what the scripture says, that they they will break forth in singing. And there's um Isaiah forty four uh, verse twenty three says, um, sing O heavens for the Lord has done it. Shout, O depths of the earth. Break forth into singing, O mountains, O forest and every tree in it. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and will be glorified in Israel. And a final verse in 90, Psalm 98, verse 4 and 8. Verse 4 says, 
Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Uh, sing praises with the lyre. Sing with the sound of melody, with trumpets, the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the earth with righteousness and the peoples with equity. I love the fact that it says, make a joyful noise before the Lord, because some of us don't have a wonderful singing voice. <laughs> and we, we, we wouldn't want everybody to hear our voice. But God, it's not, it's not the beauty of the singing. It's, it's the motive. It's the heart behind it. So I want to say to you to, today, we have a lot we'll be thinking about during the week as we prepare for Easter weekend. Um, and we think about the somber events of Good Friday. But they, everything is surrounded by this knowledge that we celebrate every Sunday that Jesus is risen. The reason the church changed their day of rest from Saturday to Sunday was because sun, Sunday was the day he rose from the dead. The first day of the week he rose from the dead. And it was a day to celebrate every, every week to celebrate the resurrection. Today we celebrate the fact that Jesus is our king. He has ridden into our world on a donkey, perhaps he's ridden in majesty into our lives. And we welcome him into our lives today. If you haven't welcomed Jesus into your life and made him Lord and acknowledged that he's done everything you will ever need for salvation and for your future, then do it today so that this Easter you will know the joy of your salvation. We celebrate the fact that the King has come. The King has triumphed. The King has triumphed in a way that kings don't normally triumph. He has battled with the enemy and defeated him single-handedly. He's defeated the enemy and we are the spoils of victory for him. We are his, um, his diadem, as it were, his crown, as we celebrate what he's done for us. And you and I, we can take our place and take, take our place along with the mountains and the trees and the hills and the seas, which all celebrate the fact that the fallen world in which we live has been redeemed and the day will come when the king will return in triumph, not on a donkey this time, but on a white horse. He will, he will return in great triumph and he will reign and restore everything for us. We have a lot to celebrate. We may not be able to go to church to celebrate today, but we can celebrate together that the king has come and that we are in his in his diadem, we are in his victory parade. We are celebrating his victory again this year as we approach Easter. So, happy Palm Sunday. If you were able to, some people were trying to put a palm branch or a palm cross on their uh, front door. I, I don't think we've got one. We, we used to have one and it's got lost. I don't know where it is. We haven't been able to put anything on our front door. But we are celebrating today um, that the King has come and the King is victorious. And the king is Jesus. See you tomorrow.